Ukrainian troops surprise incursion on Russia's Kursk region this week that was the largest ever on Russian territory since the start of the war, has placed President Vladimir Putin in a tough spot. As many as 1,000 Ukrainian troops equipped with 20 armored vehicles and 10 tanks launched an offensive on Russia's Kursk region bordering Ukraine on August 6. The incident marked the first case of Russia being invaded by another country since World War II. Bloomberg Agency has described Ukraine's incursion into Russia as an evident embarrassment of Vladimir Putin. According to Bloomberg, the attack on Kursk undermined the Kremlin's carefully constructed image of Putin as the protector of ordinary Russians. It also exposed fragility of Russian border defenses and boosted Ukrainian troops' morale against the backdrop of the war spilling over to the Russian territory. Grim-faced, Kremlin leader summoned top defense and security officials on Wednesday. Addressing the meeting with heads of security agencies, the general staff, the defense ministry, and the Federal Security Service FSB, Putin described Ukraine's surprise attack on Russian territory as a large-scale provocation. Following the attack Russian Defense Ministry stated that its forces backed by artillery and warplanes didn't allow the enemy to advance deeper into the territory of the Russian Federation, adding that Ukrainian troops suffered heavy losses in the attack. However, according to the Washington-based Institute for the Study of War, as of Wednesday, Ukrainian troops had advanced as much as 10 kilometers into Russian territory. Russian invaders base military helicopters near residential buildings in occupied Crimea. This was reported on the page of the representative office of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea on the social network Facebook. They accuse Russia of using the civilian population of the peninsula as a human shield. The occupiers are basing military helicopters on sites in the place of vacant lots near residential buildings. Also in the villages of Zankoy district, various enemy anti-aircraft missile systems are located on the outskirts of populated areas. The report says activists of the Atesh resistance movement have tracked a missile complex, radar systems and several S-300 systems in one of the districts of Sevastopol. They have already transmitted the coordinates to the relevant services. In addition, according to activists, Russian security forces have set up a federal security service station in one of the Yalta sanatoriums. It was recently visited by a commission from Moscow to monitor partisan movements. As is known, Ukrainian forces are systematically attacking the positions of the occupiers on the occupied peninsula and are also displacing the Black Sea Fleet. The Navy recently reported that there are a total of five Russian military airfields in Crimea, two of which no longer have any aircraft. As Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine heads into its third year, shortcomings within the country's aerospace forces are becoming even more apparent. The Aerospace Forces has failed to gain air superiority against a numerically inferior opponent, has insufficient intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft, lacks adequate numbers of precision-guided weapons, and has suffered meaningful losses of aircraft and attack helicopters. The bottom line is that the Aerospace Forces has often been ineffective, not inactive. Russia also is facing pressure on its weapons stocks, having, for instance, run down its pre-war stock of Raduga KH-101 conventionally armed long-range land attack missiles, a serial number, if genuine, stenciled on the side of a recently used KH-101 suggests it was manufactured only in the fourth quarter of 2023. If correct, then the missile went straight from the Raduga production site to the front line. The pressure on industry appears acute. Senior Russian military officials recently visited guided weapons manufacturer Tactical Missiles Corporation to discuss production rates and to stress the importance of both sustaining and increasing deliveries to the Air Force.